The newest iteration of Victoria 3 is coming out and the 1.5 combat update is going to be a massive overhaul for the game itself and that's why I wanted to finish off my amazing Germany run before that happens. If you guys have not kept up with my Germany run you'll have a link to the first bit in the uh, description below but to catch most people up here it is 1872 we formed Germany within the first few years of the campaign and no we did not form greater Germany because we were aiming towards a more play toll Germany which is exactly what we did but now that being said it is time that we uh, expand a little bit and increase the uh, availability of land for our people because as you can see we have 52 million population we are fifth in the world when it comes to population and that is just by essentially improving the standard of living lowering the mortality in our country and just making sure our peeps make a lot of more peeps let's say with very little immigration surprisingly if we go over to cultures, most people are North or South German with a little bit of a sprinkle of Poles around and a few a little bit everything around here as well. Like Alemannic. What the F is that? I just realized. What the F is Alemannic? Is that like uh, Swiss? It is Swiss. Okay, fair enough. Well, whatever the case, our situation is pretty good. We got 18.4 standard of living. And since 1836, as you can see, it has slowly been increasing through time with our wealthy class being actually wealthy, standing at a 44.5 of decent amount of uh, standard of living 14 million people are also loyalists with only 1 million radicals and our economy is doing pretty fine if we max this out we have 3 million on the plus right now but of course we're gonna keep it on very low taxation our legislation is pretty decent too we have most of the laws that we want to have enacted we will be going for compulsory primary school as well after we get right of assembly we got public health insurance public schools dedicated police force secret police Per capita taxation, this is going to have to change. We want to aim towards graduated taxation, which offers a little bit more money. As you can see over here, it gives an extra 50000 as it is right now. If we go for proportional taxation, also gives more, actually. So whatever the case, we need to change our taxation law. That is a faux sure. We are still a monarchy, however, and um, I don't think I'm going to change that. I kind of want to stay as a monarchy. I might change the wealth voting over to universal suffrage whenever I get support for it, because right now, pretty much everybody is opposing it. Now take note though, my main issue is the lack of a workforce. I have 43,000 unemployed and 20,000 peasants and 15 million gainfully employed. The easiest way to change that of course would be to change over proper tied women. Go for women's suffrage which is going to grant me an extra 10% workforce ratio. That is a huge amount but it's going to lower my birth rate. I'm willing to accept that however and of course we will be expanding and trying to gobble up as much of Europe as we possibly can get in this final bit of the campaign. We're also in the process of switching over to a properly electrified grid. So we're trying to uh, lower our requirements for population by having a lot of electricity replace all of those jobs. So we don't need people in like basic stuff like transport within uh, production methods and so on. We do have a lot of uh, gold reserves as well. 31 million is quite a ton. So we have enough money to change things around. We will be, however, recruiting more units we want to get up our barracks to say 500 right now so we can start our first war we don't have much population for those extra barracks so actually now that i think about it maybe i should do my first war and then build the barracks after in the newly conquered provinces because i might do some wars in south america so i can get some of these resources here since most nations don't actually give a schnapple dupe about south america for some reason speaking of if we get 5,000 likes on this video boys i'm gonna do a very special rj Argentina run in the newest patch 1.5 that I think a lot of you are gonna enjoy and hell if we bump that up to 6,000 We'll make it a challenge and we'll play as Paraguay one of the weakest nations in the game that has a lot of potential Surprisingly, but it's it's gonna be very painful. That's for sure Okay, let's also get some more government administration buildings up since uh, we definitely need some of those up We have a lot of infrastructure issues. However, especially in Posen, So let's increase that up to One more let's say should be fine for now. We're also paying maximum for government wages and for military wages this is going to give us extra army power projection armed forces approval as well as government uh, intelligentsia and petite bourgeoisie approval plus authority let's also make sure that we have all of these on the best um, production method we seem to have it right now on the best production method i'm going to need to research a little bit more in the uh, military field i haven't actually been spending too much time investing in the military field so i feel like i've been missing out a little bit on that we need to actually get bolt action 
action rifles and so on the sooner the better right actually i need to get others before that like breech loaded artillery which unlocks the shrapnel artillery production method in our barracks all right let's go ahead with the first war against the argentinians the russians might support them but you know what i'm actually super okay with that i don't mind fighting uh, russia for argentina it's almost as poo poo as fighting russia for austria getting some lands from the serbs i guess at end of the day right they are fearful, so there is a small chance that they actually might give up and the Russians don't need to join on their side. Knowing how Russia hates our guts right now, it is very likely that they're going to join the Argentinians. Let's see. Okay, looks like they might not be joining the Argentinians. They have some issues or something. Are they at war or something right now? They're not. Their only diplomatic play they have is the one with us right now. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Come on. Almost there. If Russia doesn't join, the Argentinians might actually give up without a freaking fight. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I knew it! I freaking knew it, man. Alright, that's our foothold right there in the south and bits of America. So, let's go ahead and go puppet the Chileans up next. Same situation, Russia might join, but the difference is that now we can do this. And this is going to massively pressure the uh, Chileans. They might give up before even uh, Russia gets a chance to join on their side. I actually just noticed, but Bengal seems to be an independent nation. So, I'm guessing the East India Company essentially became Bengal, which is the seventh greatest power in the world in our game. And definitely a challenger for me because I've got some lands over in the uh, Indian subcontinent here that I intend on keeping. In fact, I intend on expanding in here since I want Kalat, Afghanistan, parts of Persia, maybe even the Sikh Empire I want to get. And it looks like we're fighting the Chileans. All right, fair enough. They did not give up. So I guess you could say Chileans are braver than Argentinians. I'm not trying to start any conflict here. I'm totally not trying to do so. Obviously, we're going to be crushing whatever resistance the Chileans offer here. <laughs> Let me go ahead to my military lens. And I'm going to designate my strategic objective. Yeah, yeah. That's that's English right there. I was going to say I'm going to try and make my troops go for their capital. Fine. I admit I'm not smart with words, okay? Are you happy now? You know what? Since I'm rich as schnapps, I'm going to bankroll some people. Whoa. Did I just start bankrolling Spain, which started a revolution as soon as I started bankroll? What the F is going on here? The French proletarian revolt as well. Oh my freaking dude. Oh my dude. Like, actually oh my dude right now <laughs> why is there revolutions everywhere in the world bro i mean what hopefully we pass this legislation so that afterwards we um we get some better legislations going shall we you know fun fact about chile is that they're the only country in the world right now that still has german pickle hob helmets because of well things that happened prior to our particular modern timeline right and the impact that the prussian military had on the chileans a while back kind of funny how uh, the only remnants of the uh famous German helmet in the First and Second World War can can be found in South America, right? I mean, what else can we find in South America from Second World War German? I have no idea what else we could find, really. It's just, it's a mystery, okay? It's a freaking mystery. Only 200,000 to bankroll the Brits? Hell yeah, that is totally worth it right there. We're also gonna attempt to get total separation of uh, religious and state, or religion entities and state, whatever you want to call it. Let's see where our infamy is now. So we have 80.1. One. That's not too much, okay? That's gonna go down eventually, right? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, since we have so little... Okay, Belgium's at war as well. What the F is going on here, brother? Actually, I've also removed a few of my consumption taxes since uh, I don't need to actually have any consumption taxes right now. I'm instead going to use that authority for propagating some edicts. That's actually going to help me a lot more. So we'll start off, say, in Berlin, which uh, right now has 10.3 GDP. Okay, that's not too bad, 10.3 million GDP, but I think Silesia is actually better, 25.5. Even Bavaria might be better, 15. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's funny how my capital is doing worse than Hesse right now but hey it is what it is let's go over to Silesia and set up in this bad boy here some edicts that will help it out such as for example manufacturing industry throughput resource industry throughput is going to be a big one since we have a ton of mines over here actually and even migration attraction is not bad since we need more migrants to work in these particular areas right we'll do the same with the rest of the authority points and we're going to cancel whatever other taxes we have we only want to keep the services tax as far as I'm personally 
concern right now. And look at that, total separation is up to 49% because of all these uh, amazing little modifiers from events that we've been getting. How on earth is Great Britain better than us? We're second world's great power, even though we have doubled their GDP, more standard of living, higher population. Somehow they got more uh, prestige, I'm guessing from humiliation wars or something, I don't know. But uh, it's time to bring down the Brits. It's time to definitely bring him down. I am bankrolling them, so I guess it's not yet time to bring him down. I need them for a few wars, let's say. My eyes are now set on uh, the Indonesian bits, actually, since we need to get some of that juicy rubber to change over our production methods to uh, include the rubber. Right now, the way it stands, we cannot change our textile mills to elastics because we are producing schnapple dupe rubber, which means far goal. We gotta produce some more rubber, boys. And Johori's got a ton of rubber over here that they're not even exploiting for some reason. So we got to make sure that they start exploiting it by, you know, taking it for ourselves. So it seems like we're being joined by the Great British Empire, who's just here to chill with us and conquer the world casually. Homeboys together forever, conquering the world, bringing peace and prosperity and stealing everybody's rubber, okay? They call me Romanian, but the real Romanians are the British of the freaking 19th century. I'm just saying it how it is, bro. I'm saying it how it is. Yeah, so we're gonna take uh, Johori with uh, the Siamese part of Johori too, and uh, ten, 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 boom, boom. Those lands, those, those exact lands. In case you're wondering, those are the lands we're taking now. All right, it's gonna be a chill war because we've got the first and second best army in the world against basically natives and Portugal. So basically, just natives, really. <laughs> Hey, I'm not saying Portugal's army is trash, okay? That's not what I said. You just inferred that, okay? It's not my fault you inferred it. It's not my fault. And guess what? There's another revolution in Belgium. Not at all surprising. Like, not a single little bit surprising whatsoever. Wait, 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 wait. Is that a separate country? Is that? No, it's just radical Belgium against Belgium, I guess. Yeah. All right, yeah, this is just another revolution. I thought Belgium split into Flanders as a separate country in Valonia. That would have been cool to see. Hold up second. Did I just see the national people's party form uh, uh yeah yeah that should be that's totally not gonna end up with people being very very nationalistic i hope i re really hope so all right my troops have landed and we're absolutely kicking some buttocks over here look at their boys getting schnapple duped by my superior super soldier germanicus which is the actual term of the german army in my particular timeline at least okay even the brits they're not doing too bad they're using 50 units to destroy one enemy division which makes perfect sense obviously look if you if you think about it from a military perspective now let's do another Invasionus over here us. Boom, Theodore. Kick some butt, please, bro. And we got one of our deals. Okay. How about... We also get guaranteed liberties. That would be awesome if, if we managed to get that one done. All right. Do we still have any war here? Are we still at war with someone? Um... No. Why do we not have Malai over here? What is going on with that? Oh, no, I'm still at war with them. Hold on a second. I'm still at war with them. Right, because I got the war deal. Right, okay. Yeah, where's my naval invasion? I thought, I oh, it's here. Okay, never mind. I was a little bit confused there. Apparently, it took uh, my troops a little bit of time to actually disembark, which makes sense. Absolutely A-OK. -okay. We enforced our peace deal of nothing against the Portuguese. Basically, thousands of countless of African troops died for no reason, you bastard Portuguese. You should have just let them stay by themselves and chill and have a nice evening instead you like yo can you just fight germany for absolutely no war goal basically no reason and everyone was like okay sure whatever you say bro you're the leader here that being said though the british being in uh, this part of thailand makes sense they're actually here on vacation okay this is in fact a british retreat right now not an actual military retreat but like a, a physical retreat to chill looking forward also to the third hardwood uh, production method which was added in 1.5 i think that's what I'm missing the most in this particular playthrough the hardwood production extra uh, production method and um, the fact that wines and a few other production methods are separate so for example, the chemical fact change is for sure one of my personal favorites. And the war is over now. So uh, we've gotten two juicy provinces. Oh, come on, really? How did I not get this province? Explain that to me. Because of the Malay uprising, I paid the infamy, but I didn't get this. Are you kidding me right now, bro? Actually kidding me right now. Please tell me if I am paused, this is going to fix itself. Otherwise, this is the worst bug imaginable right now. Yep, it's the worst bug imaginable. Can I even attack them or something? Why can I not attack them? Cannot target civil war countries okay fair enough so because i need to wait till they're finishing their war what are you at war with malai <laughs> 
What are you at war with? With Siam, bro. <laughs> I took you from Siam. Oh my god, this game is so buggy sometimes. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm loving the game, but sometimes it is really, really buggy. It's not cool. Like this kind of stuff, I paid in for me and I didn't get my province. Shouldn't be happening at all. Now let's max out our rubber plantations in both of these provinces because rubber is going to be a vital, boys. Absolutely vital. Let's see what my rubber problems are right now. Okay, we're second world producer because only us and the Brits apparently produce it. Let's see uh, what else potentially produces the bengal's got some areas and a lot of african bits actually produce it okay okay i don't mind or even central american which uh, as you probably realize is totally on my radar boys let's go and set this up as our declared interest first i also need to secure my future oil prospects because let's face it oil is going to be one of the most vital resources in this game in a few years and i think venezuela might have a little bit of said uh, oil you know what i mean and we just got guaranteed liberties too that is pretty gluten since now we get 20% less radicals from standard of living decrease and 20% more loyalists from standard of living increase. So that's pretty awesome, actually. That means we're going to skyrocket our loyalists and we're going to decrease our radicals by a ton now. Okay, seems like Venezuela wants to fight us for those uh, little oil reserves. Actually, I didn't even check if they have oil. Let me, let me actually check if they do have oil. <laughs> Imagine if I attack them for oil and they don't even have it, boys. That would be just the next level big brain right there. Did I say I attack Venezuela for oil? <laughs> I didn't attack them for oil. I attacked them for um, the potential for touristic destinations. <laughs> that's that's why I attacked them. It's totally not a pointless war I'm doing right here. Hey, on the bright side, we got a foothold in north bit of South America too, right? Come on, brave Germanius. Attack, yes, the Venezuelius, which has no troopers or guns probably to fight us. So clearly this is a massive victory, you know. It's like uh, a trained fighter fighting against uh it's like somebody who actually knows how to fight against me clearly i'm not gonna be the winner in that situation is it boys nope nope no 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 Look how quickly their troopers are melting. What a what an absolute shock, really. On the bright side, we got a 65 million pops almost now. Holy mother. We're actually getting some unemployment, boys. Actually, genuinely getting some unemployment. Oh, that front needs some more troopers. Let's go ahead and uh, set these boyos over here. Thank you very much. Okay, explain to me how this happened. Somehow, my troops uh, lost access to the sea. And, uh, okay, I mean, sure, that's totally fine. We're still winning. They got minus 61 on the current war support. <laughs> Even though we have no connection to actual supplies. Um, sure, sure. Vicky 3 combat is perfectly balanced, clearly, right there. Perfectly balanced, of course. And now let's actually attack nations that do have oil, like the ones bordering Venezuela. <laughs> hey, we also got Shrapnel Artillery. That's going to give extra offense, defense, and uh, PP size. That This is how you increase your PP size, by the way. Oh, my lord. What the hell? State atheism. My big question is, though, why is there so much support for this? Atheist, national, socialist, monarchy of Germany run incoming? Hell yeah, boys. Hell yeah. Oh my god, these scumbags. What is this? Are they commies? No, no, this, they, they're still- They're a democratic- That's even worse. Democratic Republic? Ew. <laughs> I like how my uh, standard of living is just casually increasing, even though I'm conquering everything that's not got a really good standard of living. Look how much of a difference between me and the Turkic lands, bro. I mean, the Ottomans are definitely the sick man of Europe right now. That is for sure, man. All right, also time to annex our subjects here, Argentina being the first. Okay, so whilst I was busy pretty much conquering all of South America, Mr. America time over here is conquering St. Petersburg and making a dash for Moscow. <laughs> I mean, what the hell is going on here, bro? Why are freaking American troops at the border with Orwell? I am actually genuinely curious what this war is about. So this is actually a British Siamese war. What? Okay, we have the Americans on the side of the Brits and we have the Russians and Austro-Hungarians on the side of the Siamese. Ah, I see what's up. All right, subjugate Siam, ban slavery and Siam war reparations. <sighs> I, 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 I have no words to describe 
the amount of weirdness that's going on in this particular save game right now. I mean, what the schnabadoops, boys? What the actual schnabadoops? We've also done a little bit of conquest in the uh, population-rich parts of India and South America. So we've got the population necessary now. What we need to do is make sure these people are working in the right place. That's why we've uh, changed around a few of our production methods. And as consequence, we've increased our GDP up to 420 million. But our standard of living has taken a dip. We are down by one point something because of all the newly conquered provinces. Rest assured, we will bring equal rights to those new citizens of the greater German Empire. After all, we are the good guys here, right guys? And we just got tractors, everybody's favorite type of uh, vehicle, right? I mean, every single one of us loves tractors. You love tractors, don't you? You better say you love tractors or I'm sending you to the Gulag right now. I'm talking to you and that's right, we can do it because we got state atheism boys we we got state atheism okay so uh, it's a doable thing FK look at that 200 authority and evangelical church is getting 50% less uh, clout over here so I'm happy with that political strength reduction right there urban centers also have state atheism as their production method now which means we employ extra clerks and bureaucrats and now let's also change over our uh, tractors since we unlocked that tractor for you tractor for you and and probably we're gonna need to build more um, more tractor factories meaning that we're gonna need to build more engine factories really now engine factories can also produce automobiles I might produce a little bit of automobiles cuz I'm gonna need to uh, change some of my government administration to the uh, telephone switchboard I'm not doing it just yet so for now I'm still keeping all of these on uh, prioritize uh, engine production but eventually it's gonna happen so we need to make sure that we get some more factories in the meanwhile before we get to that particular point so guys I went downstairs to get a coffee and um i kind of forgot the game and the back i forgot to pause the game okay that's what happened and i come back and i see this pop-up over here and then i realize if i go over to my politics <sighs> That, um, I think my government's made out of a specific party that, uh, might be, um, a, a tad non-progressive, uh, let's say. Yep, yep, that's the, that's the word I'm looking for here. I think I might have some issues with my- How did this happen? How did this happen? Like, actually, how did this happen? <laughs> Okay, uh, we need to fix this. We need to fix this right now. Now, if I was to reform a government, I could do industrialists and armed forces, and that should be a little bit better. And we got rid of these guys from the government, okay? We're not letting them decide anything. Everything is fine. We're also still trying to enact women's suffrage. Attempt number four is gonna be the lucky one. I got full faith right here, and I got 1% endorsement for it. So clearly that's gonna pass, boys. Another thing that came alongside that for some reason is the fact that now my culture, North German, has an obsession with fine art and opium. I'm sorry, boys, but there's a Nazi party in Germany, and now all Germans are obsessed with fine art and opium. What the hell is going on in this playthrough? Like, actually, what the F is going on in this playthrough, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even making this shit up, bro. Like, this is actually insane. See, this right here is exactly why I'm actually enjoying this game. It's not so much about the warfare bit, which we, we're doing pretty good. We're doing, we're staying pretty good with that. We've essentially integrated most of our vassals in the central and uh, northern bits of South America and finished the full colonization of the southern bit of South America, plus all the Chinese, Indian, and other provinces we got. But now, we also managed to get rid of malaria, so we're properly colonized. Africa. Two big states in Africa here are ours as it is, but we're definitely competing with the Brits which have the majority of the African lands still. South Africa actually might not be such a bad puppet now that I think about it. And they're not even... they're just allied to, to Orange. Oh, this is just free real estate. This is genuinely free real estate right here. <laughs> but yeah, my main target is gonna be Persia since they have a lot of opiates and our newfound... Uh, fondness for opiates is is gonna need to be quenched boys it's, it's gonna have to be quenched somehow we do seem to have a little bit of a shortage of uh electrical factories though so let's uh build up a few more of those we have the population in germany now since uh a lot of migrants from all over the colonial empire as i probably should call it at this point uh, have started migrating towards the motherland because you know it's just better living in germany than living in south america for example what the f is going on here and i just realized boys that i am at war i I didn't even know, and apparently most of my generals died in the few minutes that I was downstairs, so, uh, 
yeah, yeah, we uh, we got to take care of Scandinavians apparently now because they seem to be losing the war against uh, their particular uh, particularists. I'm not sure what what this is. Is it proletariats against the? government or what is this i think it is isn't it they're part of my customs union so uh i need them to be properly pacified though oh and would you know austria is also on their side i like how i basically increase my gdp by 100 million from just uh, essentially changing a couple of production methods around and switching to full electrical for most of my production methods here the problem now is that i do not have enough oil and yeah we need we need to attack countries that produce oil i guess you could say i'm the 19th century's america hey <laughs> it's probably not funny it's not it's not it's not funny at all don't laugh at that one also about time we got rid of uh the uh, platinums or whatever you want to call these bad boys they've been a thorn in my side for a while and i think their province in santa cruz has a little bit of oil i might be uh in need of boys by a little bit i mean they have actually a lot of oil there that i want so hey fourth time was a charm indeed we just changed from properly tied women to women suffering so everything is good in the world World now and we got close to two million more population we can use uh can i put these women in the army that that's the real question though can i can i hire them as soldiers okay hold on a second <laughs> who decided to give this man a hat that is five times the size of his head uh i'm gonna take a screenshot of that all right i mean this is likely gonna go on the thumbnail right here whoever this was from the arts department of paradox i love you that is just the most glorious thing i've seen in this game so far <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I think everybody should have an equal hat to Mr. Federico Blanco, the the Blancoest Federico in town. Apparently, we also seem to have a general strike. Oh, that that is not good. Oh God, that's actually really not good. I, my population has been growing in the last 15 years by a freaking ton. I genuinely have more people than I need right now, which is weird because half of this playthrough I've been struggling with population basically. So now because we have all of this added population, we can start improving the amount of construction sectors. We need to get more because we need to build a lot more a lot faster so of course let's alt click all of these bad boys around uh, germany mostly i guess and whilst we're at it let's also queue up more steel factories because i feel like steel is going to be uh, a lot more important in the future world wars that we're going to likely totally not trigger it's not going to be because of us it's going to be because of other people and we're just going to defend our allies that's everything that's going to happen okay guys i do love this game a lot but it does have its fault one of which is the fact that the game crashed nine times in the past five minutes either from this revolution here triggering or after the war begins or something like that and it's just i've played one year and one hour and a half because it's just so freaking laggy i'm enjoying it but i'm not enjoying the fact that i'm slogging through the late game it's just actually unfreaking bearable and i got a pretty decent computer i think that's it for this run we're gonna switch over to 1.5 and we're gonna make a new run as germany in 1.5 well as prussia and then after germany is 1.5 and i think what i'm gonna do in that one is i'm gonna explore and i'm gonna be conquering faster in the early part of the campaign because then it's gonna make it less laggy since there's gonna be less nations in the later part of the campaign compared to now just you know make it making it unplayable so I hope you guys enjoyed this run. I had a ton of fun doing it. And if you did, then you should check out my Japan one up next.